Hello and welcome to Sunburned Albino Spotlights, Yomawari Midnight Shadows. I've started this about 10 minutes into the game, after a initial scene that's like, not, you know, it's one of those where it's like a cutaway and then it's like, oh, this is a different thing and it's like the last thing didn't happen. Which means the timeline, is, yeah. So, I've started here because this is where things get... I don't know, it's a good starting point. But anyway, Yomawari Midnight Shadows is about two best friends in elementary school girls, Yui and Haru. Haru is the blue one. She's moving away soon, and they are very distraught by this information. They've just come to the forest to watch fireworks, which have just now ended, which is where my video's starting. And... Yeah, it's a horror game. It, you know, chibi, sort of Japanese-style... Uh, thing and it's different and it's one of those games where it's like when I play it it's like it's so intriguing that it's you know it it draws you in it drew me I'm in I'm very drawn into like the universe of this game and it, yeah it's a horror game it's very scary it it's scary in like a weird Japanese way like and you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that like there's weird shit in this game that's it's monsters that look like fucking nightmare amalgamations of random who could have thought of and yeah you all saw that uh, so now we're walking in the woods on the way back. Uh, this game raises so many questions to me based on, like, the plot and things, but I don't want to, you know, this is a spotlight. I'm not trying to spoil anything. I just want to play it and show you it. It's on the PlayStation Store. It's 30 bucks. This is a game I'd much rather, like, watch somebody who knows what they're doing play it uh, than play it myself. Because, you know, this sort of, like, isometric, moving around stuff. Like, it's all, this is a game that's better watched than played, I'd say. So you all have the easy job. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Yui, will you hold my hand? Yeah, hold my hand. Let's go together. That's right, like good best friends should. You care about each other. But this game is about these two girls and their very spectrally spooky, horror, disgusting, terrible, awful... trip. And yeah. A lot of the sound effects are done through the controller. Like the heartbeat, this heartbeat thing that you're feeling. The controller doesn't stop vibrating throughout the entire game, basically. Haru, what's wrong? I... I hear a weird voice. Who is that? I hear it calling me. You want to go look? I said no before, because when I say no, I mean, like, we need to get the hell out of this forest. Like, I don't think either of us should go look. But then she's like, oh, yeah, no, but I have the flashlight. I should go look. So we go look. I have the flashlight. I'll go look. What? Just hide in the bushes. Uh, okay. very important that we split up right now. Okay. If you think things are about to climax, you're absolutely right. What's this? up a red leaf what is this a small red leash for puppies I use this to take Chaco and Kuro for walks okay yeah 
Because in the very beginning of the game, it starts with a journal entry where Yui is like, I'm, my name is Yui, I'm in elementary school. My dog died, and it made me very sad. And then it's like a scene where she goes and buries her dog, and then some other stuff happens that I'm not going to spoil. But basically, this means that that is not, like, it's not chronological what you see. This leash, how did this leash get here? And then, yeah, then we'll close our journal. Yeah, that got me. Nope, get out of my face. Go away. And you can't outrun it. First time I saw that, it scared the shit. I played, the first time I played this game, I was like browsing the PlayStation Store at like one in the morning. And I was like, you know, I kind of feel like playing something different and like, you know, and I was like, there's a couple of like scary, weird Japanese games on the store right now. And I bought this one. And it's a good decision. Like, it's, it's a super interesting game. And it's just, uh, what, what are they, what's the word for it where the app, it's foreboding? But there's another word for it too. It's just the atmosphere is so heavy, and it makes your palms sweat, and like gets you... You know, it's less jump scary, and it's more just like a constant unnerving pressure throughout the entire like just atmosphere of what's going on. But there's also jump scares. Because you need to like get used to the creatures that you're going to see in this game. You're not prepared for what you're about to witness. Alright, we got the flashlight. Let's turn it on. Oh, hold on a second. I can close this door. People just walked in. Alright, we got to turn the flashlight on. Yeah, like, what the hell is that? What is this? Someone tell me what it is. It's a giant, weird Japanese face with antlers, and it's like a spider, though, but it's not. Anyone have a guess? Like, I don't know what these creatures are. Are they, like, in, you know... I don't know if this is because, like, the mind of the director of this game is fucked up, or because or they're based on, like, real... like, demons in Japanese culture, but... I mean, what? What? <laughs> yeah, you hide in the bushes and then they go away. Eventually. Yeah, my controller is vibrating off the hook. I turned down the sound before I start. Hopefully, like, it's not overpowered. But this game is very heavy on, like, sound effects. But, the, but my question is, is, like, the girls handle this with such nonchalance that it's really perturbing. Like, there's a journal entry after you survive this night where she's like, I ran into some spirits I never seen before today. I'm, what spirits are you seeing on a daily basis usually? That these are just, oh, but these are different. All right. Jesus statue, we pray that we find Yui okay. One drawback of this game for me is that there's only one save file and you can't do chapter select. I mean, maybe you can after you beat the game, but I haven't beaten the game. I got like a few hours into it. And I'll show you a problem when we're, like, in the city. Because eventually the game just adopts a strategy of just throwing everything at you at the same time, just all the time with no break at all. Like, you'll be walking through the street and it's just monster after monster chasing you and you have no room to breathe. And it gets very frustrating. Because if you get caught, you die instantly. And then you respawn at the last Jinzo statue you were at. And you have to go all the way 
to the place which uh, to the place where you probably died again, which means you have to dodge like 15 monsters again probably and do it perfectly. And that's the kind of thing that can over frustrate a game to the point of no longer being tolerably fun. You know? I mean, this isn't a game I would describe as like fun to begin with, but it's investable in terms of like you want to see it to its conclusion. <laughs> Ghost happened there. The tiptoe option is supposed to make it so spirits don't notice you. I've never experienced that actually working. Like, I'm gonna tiptoe right here. There's a thing coming up. I wanna see if it doesn't notice me because I'm tiptoeing right now. There it is. Yep, no, it see me. It sees me very much. Some monsters are adverse to the flashlight. Most aren't. Some monsters you can only see with the flashlight, and it's like, well, you know, there's a lot of backwards logic happening in this game. Like, there's no, like, one-size-fits-all method of avoiding things. A lot of times it's just, like, try and juke them, literally, like you're like playing football, like juke them. Dude, excuse me, what the hell is nearby? But yeah, it's a super atmospheric game. Like, if you get it yourself and play with, like, headphones in or something, you will absolutely get drawn in and you'll be terrified. No doubt about it. This is a game that has the potential to just eerily dis disrupt your consciousness. And it's a game that you think about after you're done playing it. So I endorse this product 100%. Even if it's not something that, like, I'll probably play to completion because, you know, it's too frustrating on occasion to die after you travel, like, three blocks and then have to travel those three blocks again. But just story-wise alone, it's worth my money. I'm glad I bought it, even if I don't finish it. Right, we got this coin. There's tons of different monsters, too. It's almost too many. <laughs> no, there's no... No, but still. And you'll never... You know, you have to trial and error with how to avoid things. Because, you know, there's monsters that can only be seen with the flashlight. I've been killed by something I never saw before. Uh, there's monsters that are just undodgeable because they're meant to block certain pathways. And you won't find that out until you try and traverse them. There's monsters that are faster than you and will catch you no matter what. And there's monsters that can be distracted by objects. But you'll ne you ha the only way to learn any of that is trying. Hello. Yeah, this thing's back. Uh, I, you know, I thought we had grown apart. I'm glad you decided that we weren't quite done enjoying each other's company. I saw that little cute little Pomeranian dog over behind here. That's Huey's dog, the alive one. Although apparently both dogs are still alive in this timeline. Like, this is a dark story. It does not shy away from uh, dark themes. Especially when you consider the fact that children are the star of this game. You? Yeah, just shat out a little glitter sparkle and ran away.
But the game has you alternate control of Haru and Yui as you do different things. I mean, because basically, like, there's no... It's no secret that Yui's missing, right? So you control Haru and Yui at different points, traversing different environments, trying to find each other. A chewed-up charm I got from a dog. It has some black hairs on it. It's really worn out. And the dog that died in the first scene was a black-haired dog. So this is probably from it. I do, yeah, I still say that I wholeheartedly recommend that, like, especially if you're into this kind of game. Like, I'm not, typically. This isn't something I would have thought was in my wheelhouse. But story-wise, I do get invested in things like this pretty easily. Just not, it's not my cup of tea gameplay-wise, but still, I recommend it. I recommend you experience it in either, either you play it yourself, or you find someone who's like, has a series or something. By the way, there's no adults in this town at all, apparently, because like... Why, who else lives there? Is Yui the only person that lives in that house? I'll leave a letter so she'll see it if she comes back. Yeah, true fact, do that. I left a letter at Yui's house. But yeah, you play this game and you wonder where other people are. Because they exist. Because it's in, they, there's implications that prove that they are, in fact, in this world. And some of them are even, like, you know, suffering the spirits as well. But it's like, where are they? And is this just something that happens nightly and people just hide in their homes and hope the spirits don't come inside? In which case, why do these two go see fireworks in the forest in the middle of the night? What kind of people are you? You gotta have, I know you're elementary school kids, but you gotta have some kind of common sense. Somebody taught you that, didn't they? Okay, but this is also how you save your game, as you offer. It's a checkpoint save system. If you get pretty far and then die, your map, because, like, you create the map as you go. Which, this is very charming. This is a charming map. Drawn by a little child, and it gets filled in as you go. You keep your map completion even if you die without saving, which is nice. Let's you know exactly where you ended up and where you can go. But yeah, if you thought you'd be safe as soon as you got into town, you were mistaken. And there's so, this town has so many roadblocks that are in places that just suck. Like, it's not fair. My house should be just down there and across the bridge, but I have to go, like, up and around because... Yeah. Ah, get out of my face! And yeah, we just... We don't care, apparently. This is par for the course. Uh, yeah. No thanks. I actually have never gone this way. I want to go this way. Because we can dodge this thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, we got a rock. And we're just running around in circles to avoid this. It loses its scariness for sure, but... We have found a cocoon. A big cocoon that I've never seen before. It sometimes it wiggles. I wonder what's inside. Yeah, there's like random collectibles. I don't know if they serve any actual purpose. Excuse me. Oh, we found a dog toy. It's a dog toy in the shape of a bone. There are a lot of bite marks on it. Makes sense. Monsters look freaky af, no question. And they are everywhere. Look at that shit. See that? Which it means like they're in the houses too. Like what's going on? I, 
don't know. Home is over here on the other side of this bridge. We found a puzzle. I didn't find that puzzle before. Dirty puzzle piece. I wonder what kind of picture it's going to make. I guess if you stray off the beaten path a lot, you'll find like interesting collectibles. But it's very scary to do that, so makes it difficult. I didn't go this way last time. What kind of new things could we see if we go over here? Okay, so this creature can only be seen with a flashlight. It basically exists as a roadblock. If you go up to it, you'll die. And uh, these things move as they uh, as you progress in the story and open up new paths, which is neat. That's a neat way to do things. Makes it so you don't get lost. You get a lot of the town explorable right off the bat. Graffiti. It's some kind of weird face. Oh, I've seen that face in other places before. And there's a flyer for a mouse exterminator posted here. It says, call us for consultation about your pest problem. Our trained staff is ready to help. That's great. That's worth reading. Oh, hello to that thing. Yeah, you take up the entire street and you're not dodgeable. What the shit? Pass on uh, getting any closer to that. I'm glad I took the long way because it's keeping me honest too about my reactions. Oh, that's nice. We got another Jinzo thing. You gotta go find these because you can fast travel between them too, eventually. Which is neat. Very useful for uh, when you need to get to different places at different times. You know how fast travel works. Oh, right, this was the shortcut I didn't go on. I want to go through here just to show you something very disturbing. That I think will happen. It might not happen since I'm going backwards, but... Yep, that. Look at it. It's on my face. Please, get off. The implications here. I need you to, yeah. Not only did I walk through a spider web, the spider was in the web and it stuck to my face and I didn't, and I just kind of let it happen. It's not cool at all. I hate that. I hate everything about that. Let's see, we know, yep, we always check the map. We're filling it out pretty good. I've deleted my save data like twice, which is, it feels like a waste because it is, but you know, it's for the purposes of the video, so I'm fine. It's a poster. The dam reservoir is low, please conserve water. That's what it says. I, I, I've seen that three times now and I totally forgot that's still about me. This is what is going on. It's a construction sign. We apologize for the mess. Yeah, it's all over town. You guys should apologize for putting me in so much danger. Uh, yeah, we should be running. All right, there's another one of the things that block. This one, I guess light of any kind. It's not just the flashlight, because this one's standing under a street lamp, which is why it's lit up, I suppose. house. I finally got home. Yui. I wonder where she went. I'm just gonna go inside and just hope that she's okay. 
it's not the game's not very good about letting you know how much time has passed between each thing. But apparently this doesn't all take place in the same night. Like it's it's a it's a cross time. See, like this journal page. Today is fireworks day. On my way home, I saw a spirit I've never seen before. It attacked us and I lost Yui. I wonder if Yui got home okay. A lot of things keep popping up in my head. I don't think I can sleep tonight. Ugh. Anyway. Anyway, that's, that's Yomawari Midnight Shadows. And uh, after this, you'll wake up as Yui and go where Yui is and do that. And then you'll just kind of switch off between characters. Haru will continue to go out at night searching for Yui, which I would not advise at all. But, you know, Yui's dog is an ever-present art thing leading you to good things, trying to lead you through, which is nice. And, yeah, she can hear Yui's voice calling to her, so I guess if I heard someone's voice being like, I mean, I guess I'd go. I don't think I could ignore that forever. But that's this game. So if it intrigues you, you should get it, or you should watch somebody get it, and then watch them play it. I'm, yeah, I'm glad I bought it. Even if I don't finish it, I like it. And that's that. Oh, it's also like a sequel to a, another game. That's like Yomawari something else, I think. Midnight Alone, I believe it's called. I didn't play that, but yeah. Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys.